during the show, uh, some folks mentioned that they worked with sales and marketing up front. And for those folks who want to comment on that, how much effort did you invest in working with them to understand the essence of your game? Uh, it was a lot of work. Because like one thing is making the game that you have in your head and uh, communicating what's cool about your game to the, to the team and, and to everybody. Uh, another thing is to actually boil it down to a few very simplistic messages that communicate really quickly what your game is. And that is very, very hard because in our case, you know, we ended up saying, okay, well, you are, it's a first person action game where a supernatural assassin in a steampunk city. And that's already like kind of long. And the shorter version of that is that you're a supernatural assassin in a steampunk city. Uh, but like we had so many uh, things that as nerds we, we wanted to communicate on. Like, oh, you know, the amount of choices that you give to the player and the consequences and the simulation of, of, the, of the world and, uh, you know, all, and all those tools for the players and he can play the way he wants, you know. But, but that was very important to us, but obviously it was not that important to, um, as a mass market message. And so it, it took us, like, you know, it's a simple sentence, but it took us a long time to come to that simplicity. Yeah, there were a lot of there were a lot of shortcuts that we didn't have. We couldn't just say first person shooter or um, open world driving game, or even in terms of setting, uh, you know, uh, science fiction soldier soldiers or old west. Or we couldn't we couldn't use any of the shortcuts because the game is a weird hybrid, and the world is not something you see in video games every day. So it was a very very big challenge. Very cool. So um, in our case, uh, Star Wars is a was a ludicrously over-examined game before we launched the game, and that's that's where we pretty much applied the uh, the marketing was to ask our fans. Uh, we had um, a company called Imagine uh, do all sorts of focus groups, all sorts of polling uh, of our market. Uh, we did our own metrics. We did our own in-game surveys. Uh, we analyzed all sorts of stuff uh, in, inside of the, the game data that we got from the players. One of the things about Bioware is they have a, you wouldn't know it from listening to me, but they have a really strong culture of humility. And uh, they really, really believe that you don't actually know your own game. You're too close to your own game. And you have to actually get that kind of feedback from the fans in order to actually understand what people really appreciate about the game and how they actually interact with the game. Because very frequently you're wrong. You're just too close uh, to actually see the flaws that are inside of the game. And, and you know, we invested very, very heavily in finding out that information from, from the people who were testing our game before we went live. 